I mean, just listen to this. Now, if that doesn't harken back to a UJB superbike era of the early 70s, I don't know what does. If you've harkened after one of these bikes from the early 70s, well, the real thing has just arrived. So here she is then, the Kawasaki Z900RS, just picked her up and as you can see, in, in my opinion anyway, and I know this is very subjective, but that is an absolutely gorgeous piece of kit. Um, it looks like it's been honed out of one piece of metal. Whoever styled this um, did it in clay first and they, they worked with their hands, you know what I mean, they just, they just made something that looks and feels gorgeous when you look at it. It could be a violin, it could be a wine bottle and that old cliche, it could be a woman's body. It is absolutely spectacular. They've got these faux cooling fins on here, uh, akin to the original one. The badge is a 3D badge, it's not just a transfer on there. Um, personally, I like the black better than the uh, burnt orange and uh, I think it's called root beer. Uh, the stripes though, uh, they go back here, they're gorgeous, but what I don't uh, appreciate is the fact that on this model they haven't continued the stripe and I wish uh, I wish to God they had because it would have been certainly a lot nicer. They've done an awesome job uh, on the exhaust. It's really good. Four into one. Now there are lots of people out there complaining why didn't they do as the original did? Four pipes into two on either side. Uh, do you know what everybody did on the original folks? They took those off and they put them into four into one. Kawasaki did you a favor here. Um, double walled pipes. They're not going to blue. Uh, gorgeous looking finish on them. The only issue I have is take a look at how short this mudguard is. Uh, these things are going to get perpetually dirty all the time. Uh, getting a, a longer mudguard on there would have been better. Um, nice LED light at the front. If you take a look, this is a full LED light. Um, a nice touch. It's something about the design. And I really like the sculptured uh, dials here. The original had those as well. And uh, the way the curve comes down here is, is very, very nice looking. The brakes are 300 mils, twin discs, uh, four calipers per pot. Stop you with one finger very rapidly. Uh, we've got a, I think it's a 210, 205 mil disc. Same thing. I'm very impressed with how effective that rear brake is actually, uh, especially compared with my Suzuki's, which is a bit wooden. Uh, this one really, really stops you well. Uh, again, same problem here. Why, why can't people fit a decent hugger to a bike? You're going to get all sorts of crap appearing. There's even a piece of gravel down here right now um, in there. So, you know, again, if I was going to buy this bike, I would definitely extend that hugger on there. If you take a look in here, you can see this horizontal shock. It's wound right off right now. There's a couple of windings shown there, but it's about as soft as you can make it. Um, and for me, it's working really, really well. I weigh about 180 pounds and uh, the uh, performance of that is working really well. I suppose if you took this to a track, you would uh, wind that on a fair bit, but for the everyday road use, I'm finding this suspension is spectacular on this thing. I'll talk more about the handling and so on and so forth as I get there. Uh, I'm trying not to sound too effusive about the bike. I've deliberately uh, kept my hopes and expectations down because the media can be such a, such a great exaggerator when it comes to the performance of bikes. The last time I was here, I was with another another bike which really impressed me, which is the Vitpilen 701. And it's a, although it's a slightly smaller CC bike, there are a lot in common between these bikes and I'll talk about it when I ride it. But one of the things you're gonna notice is that uh, when you ride this bike, when you sit on it, you're going to feel that it's an old friend. You've been in it, not on it, in it for a long time. It's going to feel very familiar to you. It's an easy, easy bike to ride. But you've got uh, twin clocks here. And uh, if I turn them on, they do the usual sweep. 
up comes gear indicator, which is great. It does have a gas gauge on it, which is a, a big plus for me. Temperature gauge, of course. And then you've got a com trip computer. You can scroll through all sorts of different things there. How far it's gone, trip A, trip B, and then you're going through the odometer. There you've got the temperature and it is a November day today and I'm actually slightly shivery right now. It's a bit, uh, I'm not sure if it's the experience of the bike or the temperature. And then it's got the uh, range on it and then the average and the intermittent uh, economy. And beautiful discs here. You can change this to miles an hour, by the way. Um, it's all electronic, so this will change to miles an hour if you want. And yeah, it's just, a, it's just a very traditional yet very functional dashboard. I love it. Fully adjustable front suspension. And then at the back, I think you've got uh, preload and uh, damping on there. Uh, it might even be rebound as well. I think this is, this is one of those bikes that looks good from any angle. Some bikes only look good from the rear three-quarter, some from the front three-quarter. But this thing, as you sweep around it, and I don't know about the distortion that's coming off this GoPro right now, apologies for that. But as you go around it, it is good from, it's beautiful from every corner. It's a gorgeous looking bike. Whoever did this understands something we call proportion. And it is well proportioned. So the switch gear looks really good. Here's the horn indicator, horns below the indicator, which is where it should be. Uh, Honda BMW. Uh, this is the four-way flasher. Uh, high beam, low beam. There's even a flasher on the front here. And then you've got the engine start, engine kill switch right there. Uh, negatives? Well, I'd have to say that that right there, the brake fluid, um, is a bit sort of out there. I guess you can see it. Balances my camera nicely, but I'm wondering if they could have, uh, you know, made that, metalized that and put it down somewhere else here. Contiguous with that. I'm not sure of the purpose of why that's out there like that, except to let you know, hey, you know what, you go brake fluid. The clutch is not a hydraulic clutch, but you know what, it doesn't need it. It's such a light feeling clutch. This particular bike also has uh, heated grips on it. This is These are the Kawasaki ones, so you haven't got the great big Oxford lump here or anything like that. So off we go, and right away as you start riding this thing, you're going to notice how flippin' smooth it is. I haven't got that much experience with four cylinders, but this thing is unbelievably smooth right out of the box. And fast. It's not uh, quite as crazy as the XSR 900 but it's darn close and uh, it's incredibly uh, this engine is incredibly flexible you can you can grunt it down low and it's as happy as a clam or you can rev the balls off it and it's smooth all the way through then there's the engine note and i don't think i'm doing it justice right now but when i when i get off the bike in a little bit i, I will run the engine for you and and let you hear what it sounds like and it is absolutely spectacular now this road is an awful road as far as road surface goes. This particular bit's nice and then boom, we come back into this sort of hoppy stuff. But it is comfy. The suspension on this is very, very comfy. Yeah, you can just, it's, it's unbelievable how you can just flick this thing around. It is so easy. It feels like my, my uh, FE390, um, really. <laughs> You're going to say to me, no, come on, it's a 900, it weighs 440 pounds. It carries its weight super lightly. If you asked me to guess what this weighed, I would say 370. There was no difference in feeling between this and the, uh, the uh, XSR 900. The handling on both of them is superb, um, absolutely superb. It's so neutral, so easy. And like I said, it's that old friend. It, you just look where you want to go and it goes there. There is very little in the way of input usable, tractable and linear, you're not getting um, quite the kick in the pants you got the XSR would hit about five and you would get this incredible turbo feeling and if that's for you that's great but um, popping the front wheel every six seconds isn't for me. Wow that picked up over five. I take that back. Uh, yeah, this this grooved in as soon as I hit five. It was like someone just gave, you know, took my shoulders in the, both their hands and stuck a boot in the middle of my back and pushed and then let go. That was like a catapult. Impressed, deeply impressed with how quickly that got up to speed.
Okay, the gearbox on this thing is super slick, super smooth. It is an extremely positive gearbox. I mean, I can tell exactly when I've changed. In fact, first and second right now, this bike being so new is, is uh, a definite thick clunk when you put it in. Maybe a bit too much if I was to say, but that'll probably wear in a bit more. You know exactly where you are. There's a gear position indicator there. So I'm in fifth gear right now, cruising along three and a half. Very smooth, very tractable. You could play with this bike all day long. The fueling on this thing is perfect. There are people out there saying that this throttle is way too sensitive, etc., etc. Bullshit. I call BS on that. I'm one handing it here. I'm opening it up. I don't see any issues to you. I'm opening it up. I'm using it judiciously. The fueling on this is as smooth as silk. It's like a baby's bottom of softness. This bike is very comfortable to ride. It's very smooth, very easy, as I've mentioned. Things I like about it, the seating position, you feel like you belong on this bike. It's, it's right there. You sit in it, it's comfortable for a six foot 33 inch inseam. I can tell you, I was born to this bike. Uh, Kawasaki did their research. It's designed for North American riders or European riders, I would say. You don't feel cramped. My legs are about 75 degrees, maybe 80. It's a low center of gravity. Uh, I'm not sure what the seat height is. I'd be guessing if I said it, but as six foot, 33 inch inseam, I can uh, put both feet flat down and lift my, lift my gorgeous derriere off the seat. When you roll off the throttle, you feel a snarl through the bike. It's, it's very nice. But when you roll on the throttle, it's that snarl, the liquid silk. Gorgeous. This thing, the sound is a harmonic pleasure. It is a melody, a fruitful overture of gorgeousity. I absolutely love this sound. It's a beautiful burble when you get off that throttle. I don't know if you can hear it. Oh yeah. You just hold that throttle, just decline it a little bit, just slowly, and you get that gorgeous after pop. The snap, the crackle, the pop. It's, it's beautiful. Oh yeah. They've really done a good job on this exhaust. Other electronic aids to it. Right now I've got it on K-Trick 2. Uh, it's because it's been run in, that's what they wanted on K-Trick 2. K-Trick 2 is the traction control 2. And it, uh, I, it's very unobtrusive. There's also traction control 1 and off. And the heater grips, oh, mwah, get them. They're about 350. And then I believe, don't let the Kawasaki dealer tell you anything, but I believe uh, from what I've heard and read, it's about two hours labor to get them on. So you're, you're looking uh, a lot more expensive than the Oxfords for, uh, you know, $100 or whatever. You're looking sort of five, six times as expensive. So you go for the look, and these are integrated and very nice. Or you go for the Oxfords for a lot cheaper, but for a naked bike, you're gonna need heater grips, that's for sure. You might be noticing a little bubble that comes up about here every few seconds as I'm riding, and that's an eco bubble that tells you when you're being economical with the bike, which brings me on to what am I getting? Well, on average, and this is a very short average because I just fueled it up, an average of 5.6 liters per 100, and I haven't been particularly kind to the bike. And right now it's doing about 5.1, and you can see that eco triangle on. If I gas it, it goes off. Yeah, 
Yeah, that is very, very responsive. Just winding through it. The sort of thing you're going to be using this bike for is commuting to work. You don't want too many highway miles on it, although um, 100, 120, no problem at all. It's not as comfortable as the V-Strom behind a shield, obviously, but there is no buffeting. It's even, uh, lots of even air on it. Oh my God, this is incredible. You know, you find yourself going too far out, just tilt it over. It, it just falls into corners, this thing. So you're not going to get, the, the air pressure on this thing is really, really uh, even. You're not getting a lot of buffeting at all. In fact, I'm not getting not, uh, any. And look at this bell on here. This is not causing any problem at all. I'm quite uh, amazed at how smooth the airflow on this thing is at speed as well. You're going to use this, like I said, for scratching around roads like this. Uh, country roads, back roads is what you want it for. It's going to be your trinket, I would imagine, if you're buying this. stable head on that too. You pull out and there's no problem. Do I have gripes about the bike? Uh, there are a few. One is from a seating position when you're actually riding the bike, um, you can actually see the corner of the rad sticking out either side. For me that takes away from the glorious shape of the tank. I think that that's a bit of an oversight by uh, Kawasaki, um, but I guess, you know, function has to come before form and it gets me onto the cooling. Uh, when I picked this up, I was in stop and go traffic and immediately uh, the temperature gauge went up to four bars, uh, then to five bars. It goes up to six bars full and usually runs around two or three. Well, my, my experience is with my Suzuki V-Strom. It never changes from three bars. It can be zero Celsius or 44 degrees Celsius like it was in Oregon this year, two up, and it will stay at three bars. The fan comes on, whatever. It's a very unobtrusive fan. You can't tell it's on with your helmet on. And it keeps that engine at the perfect, perfect temperature, you know? This, in the stop and go traffic, it will get up to four or five bars rapido. So I immediately took it back to the dealer. Yeah, that's nice. Even in sixth gear from 3000 RPM, she just wants to go. So I took it back to the dealer and said, you know, uh, is this thing overheating? Seems to be right on the limit. He said, well, did the, uh, did the big red light come on pointing at that? And then of course there's the uh, temperature, there's a temperature gauge on here that would flash. He said, do you see any coolant? I said, no. And he said, well, that's not really a temperature gauge that will tell you when it is overheating. It'll tell you when it's warm and hot and cool, but it won't tell you when it's overheating. And when it's on five bars, the fan will kick in and bring it back down to four. Is, did that happen? I said, yes, it did. He said, well, you've got no problems. Well, my question is, why do we need a temperature gauge that is quite that sensitive? All it's going to do is alarm the rider. The rider's going to sit there and say, oh, I'm boobling along and it's usually on two or three and suddenly it's up to five. Of course, any normal person's going to say, this thing's overheating. It isn't and it runs fine and it's sure enough, the temperature comes back down to three or four with the fan on and, the, and it just sort of cycles between that until you get it moving. As soon as you get it moving, it's back down again. Uh, so yeah, my question is why it have to be quite that sensitive Kawasaki. I'm not sure that serves any purpose but to scare the rider. The other one is the fuel gauge. You'll get all the way down to one bar above empty and then if you go to the range it'll tell you you've got like 95 kilometers left. And it seems to be true. So why that last bar has to ha still have 95 kilometers on it, I don't know. It would, it would make more sense if it spent more time in the middle of the range and drop more slowly till it got to the empty and was a truthful representation of when it's empty. This has uh, ABS. It's not lean sensitive. I wish it was. This is, a, in my opinion, a premium Kawasaki. If you look at the price of the Z regular Z900, it's a couple of grand cheaper. If you look at this, it's the Z900 RS. You're looking at uh, over $13,000. Uh, I think it's a couple of hundred more for the, for the burnt orange and uh, ghastly root beer. Sorry, I, I know a lot of people love that color, um, but I always hearkened after the green and yellow one. Uh, and I love this black. The black for me is, and it's cheaper, which is very unusual for me. I don't usually, uh, whenever I see something, you know, I say, oh, that's lovely. What is that? And of course, it's the most expensive version of something I'm looking at. So it's like, what is it? For once, I'm actually lusting after the one that is about 200 bucks or 300 bucks cheaper. Yeah, this is a premium bike and we're about uh, 13,200 Canadian. Don't know what that translates to in, in the US or in Britain or any of the other places. But 13,200 Canadian before freight, PDI, taxes, etc. That's a lot of money. 
And again, for me, this should have lean sensitive ABS on it if you're going to be uh, charging that much for the bike. It's a naked bike, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 your, it's your tootle around, enjoy, enjoy bike. It's a lot to ask. Is it worth uh, it? it? Yes, it is. Uh, every bit of it. You'll know what I mean when you ride this thing, it is worth it. What they've been saying about it is absolutely true. You've got a, you've got a bike that's testing. Uh, it's a lovely smooth bike, it's easy to ride, but uh, it's, it, the thing that it's testing is not your riding ability, but your ability to hold it in check, not to do crazy things with it, not to ride too quickly. You know, it's... Uh, it's, it's such a beautiful bike. It's like silk. Smooth, smooth, smooth. The old UJB. The super, super bikes from the early 70s. That's what this is modeled on. And what you've got here is a super bike from the 70s with uh, the next millennium's beautiful uh, enhancements. And at the same time, nature that those bikes gave you back then with perhaps none of the downsides you know I'm not sure what frame geometry was like back then being a being a very young kid I wasn't riding those bikes around um, but I, I did later on get a Kawasaki H1 and a KH440 triple two-stroke and that thing was uh, was a nightmare frame wise the motor you'll never never hear a sweeter sounding motor well maybe you will I'll get off and go around this one this is pretty damn sweet it's planted you feel good on it yeah so easy so quick to uh, to do what you want there's there's no counter steering necessary you just look where you want to go on this thing and it takes you there very very nice I don't know how the sound's coming out, by the way. This is a new camera. Long story short, me old one packed it in. Me, me Hero 4 Black just packed it in. And I've got a Hero 5, got an awesome deal on it, Black. Um, $270, brand new. But I've got no idea how the sound is working on this. And back where I was before, by the way, I just enjoy this road so much. It's a very good test for a bike. This road surface and uh, the tiggly wiggly bits. What am I doing? 90 kilometers an hour and I can just flick it around like that. I mean, I've got to say, uh, up until this point, one of the most exciting and enjoyable bikes I've ridden on the road was my Huserberg. It's just a blast on the road, uh, Supermoto. But this comes a really, really, really close joint first. Am I giving away which bike I'm going to end up purchasing right now? I think I am. I think I'm going to come clean. I want this bike. You know, it was it was spellbinding as soon as I got on the thing, but I decided to try to play it low key, cool, not to uh, salivate, effuse, etc. But uh, this is getting the better of me. I've got to say, this bike is one of the most beautiful bikes that's ever graced my buttocks. I mean, this bike is, is an erotic sensation as far as motorcycling goes. This is motorcycle erotica for me. And here we go. What better place to end uh, this than, than at the end of a runway? And here we are. Because, in my opinion, this thing is the motorbike equivalent of a Spitfire.
Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed making it and riding that delicious bike. Until next time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Blue Marble Rider, out.